guys, welcome back to day two of the classroom setup series. I'm super excited for today because I feel like I'm finally gonna get down some of the organization stuff and that is one of those things that kind of just like swirls around in my head at night as I'm trying to sleep and keeps me up at night. So I'm excited to get this tackled. Um, if you saw day one of the classroom setup series, you saw me set up the layout and because of the way I do my classroom, I don't have a desk for every student. They get to choose every day when they come in where they wanna sit. We do a ton of movement throughout the day and so the traditional like desk and chair setup just really doesn't work for the way I teach. So um, this works a lot better for me and for my students. So because they don't have their own desk, we need a place to put their materials that would normally go in their desk. So instead I have like a bin and cubby system that I'm gonna walk over and show you. It lives in my library. And every morning when the students walk in, they come over, they grab their bin. So they know which one is theirs because it has their number on it. So each of them has a class number. And they also know where to put it back because there's a little sticker. But as you can see, it's kind of falling apart. So I'm gonna fix that as well. And then we are an Avid elementary school, so we have Avid binders that I need to set out. I think I'm gonna put together their homework folders. Um, I'm going to tackle this situation in a different way this year. So that's what we have going on today. I'm gonna try to get this whole system organized. Um, if you saw my first classroom setup vlog, I wasn't sure how I felt about the layout. I kind of feel like I like it. Um, I do still need to find a different table for this little area, but I haven't been able to find anything yet. So um, I was thinking of doing like a shop with me series for back to school shopping. So I'm gonna take you guys along with me on that. And that is where I'll be hopefully finding a table. But for today, I'm going to just try to get the bins tackled, homework folders, and maybe get started on printing out some stuff for my back to school packet. So the first thing I decided I'm gonna tackle is the little stickers inside of the cubbies. So I got these from my school. I'm sorry, I don't know where they're from, but um, I hope it doesn't bother me that they're all different colors. <laughs> but I'm just going to take a Sharpie and I'm going to write each number on one of the stickers and then tape it onto the little bottom part of the cubby system. Um, I'm gonna replace those other ones because they're kind of just like dingy and the tape is coming off and some of them are just gone completely. So that is what I'm gonna start with. You guys, I have the world's worst luck, but I am super excited because this just so happened to work out perfectly. I have 24 cubbies, hopefully only 24 students. We haven't got our class list yet, but as you can see, my little Chromebook sticker bin thing is completely empty. This was all I had, and I had just the right amount. I love when that happens. That literally never happens to me. I would usually be like one short. <laughs> so I'm gonna stick these on, and then I will show you what I'm doing next. Okay, so as you can see, I just replaced the stickers. I just stuck it on there with some tape, and voila. Some of the old ones didn't come off super great, like you can see on this one, the old tape's underneath, but it doesn't really matter. It's just so they can find their bin easily, because as you can see, when all the bins are gone, only the top row is gone right now, but when all of them are gone, and then at the end of the day, they're supposed to be putting their stuff back, it's kind of hard to figure out which one goes for which number. So this is a really easy way that they can just go, oh, I'm number five, this is where my bin goes. So that is why I am doing this. So I'm gonna finish these up and then I'll show you the next thing. So this is the little box that I just kind of threw all my stuff in at the end of the school year. We are lucky and we do a fundraiser at the end of the school year called Readathon. Students are able to get pledges from people they know and um, depending on how much they read, they can donate money. So we are able to get some supplies for that. So I got some composition notebooks. I'm gonna put one in every student's um, bin. And then we also have Avid binders. And it looks like I forgot that I already started organizing these at the end of the year. Love myself for that. So it looks like I just put in the little um, five tab dividers. And we use these for all the different subjects that we teach. And they're able to house like their three column notes, vocabulary, all different kinds of things that they can reference throughout the year. 
And this is gonna go in their bin as well. Um, it looks like I'm missing a box because this is definitely not all the folders I'm supposed to have. And I can't remember for life for me where I put it. So <laughs> I'm gonna try to find that today. You guys, this is what I get for coming over summer. This is the hallway that my cabinet is in that has all of my binders that I need, but I can't get in there because they're waxing. So since the floors are being waxed in the hallway where I have the binders, I think, I hope, um, I'm going to just tackle something else. I'm gonna put it on my head. It's not gonna bother me. Hopefully <laughs> it'll be fine. I will have time to do it next week. So um, I'm gonna try to tackle the pencil situation a little differently this year. So. Last year, and actually every year that I've been teaching, this is what I had going on with the pencil situation. So every student could come grab one in the morning. They would grab one out of the sharp bucket. The sharp pencils were supposed to be facing tip up so you could see that they were sharp. And then the dull pencils you would put face down so that you would know which was which. I don't know. It's just the system I had going. And then every so often I would sharpen them. As you can see, this is left from the last day of school. This system did not really work for me that well for two different reasons. One, my electric pencil sharpener broke. Um, I usually don't let students use it because it was like a nice expensive one, but um, I don't know, the end of the school year I just got lazy and so I was like, yeah, you can sharpen it. And of course it broke. So I am not replacing that this year. And so what I did instead is in this bucket I just had little pencil sharpeners that they could use. And the pencil sharpenings were everywhere, and this is just what it looked like all year. So to try to combat that, um, I was looking on Pinterest and Instagram and everywhere that I could think of to try to find a solution, and someone showed me these on Pinterest, and I'm super excited. They are just toothbrush cases from the Dollar Tree. They come in two in a pack. They had all different colors, but I just got the red and white ones. And um, I'm going to label each one of these with a student number, and then I'm going to give them I don't know how many pencils fit in here. We'll see, maybe like three or four. And then they are going to also get their own little pencil sharpener. I got these cute little ones that are like little noses and then they put the pencil in the nostril. I'm hoping they think it's funny and that hopefully it'll encourage them to sharpen their pencils. I don't know. But either way, that's the system I'm gonna use this year. So they will just keep this toothbrush case with their pencils in their bin. So right now I'm going to fill them with some pencils, put their number on them and put them in their bin because I don't wanna ever sharpen another pencil again. So at the end of the year, again, with that readathon money, I was able to purchase a big box, where is the front, <laughs> from Amazon of pre-sharpened pencils. And then um, I also got some Ticonderoga pencils because they're the best, but I forgot to get the sharpened kind, no! So um, I'm gonna have to sharpen these, I guess. But for now, there is 150 in this pack. <laughs> I just wanted to update you guys. I just put three pencils in each. I don't know if that will be enough. I might need to put some more, but my plan is to have them sharpen them on their own so they can sharpen them whenever they need to. They will have a little pencil sharpener. I was thinking about maybe even getting like a small little tiny Tupperware for them to keep in their bin. And that way when they need to sharpen it, they don't have to get up. They can just sharpen it into their bin and then empty that on Fridays. But I don't know, that seems a little extra. So <laughs> we'll see how it works out. And then if I need to make adjustments, I will. Um, and then I wasn't really sure how many pencils to give them either. So I'm starting with three. That might not be enough. It might be good. It might be too many. I don't know. But then I was thinking maybe on Fridays is when um, if they need another pencil, they can trade theirs out. I'm hoping this will help them not lose them. Um, I was thinking about writing their numbers on each pencil, but again, seems pretty extra. I don't really know. So I think this is just going to be enough and I'm just going to put their number like right here and then toss them in their bins. Voila! 
that's all it is. I was going to use my Silhouette Cameo and cut out like cute little vinyl numbers, but ain't nobody got time for that. And I didn't really want to mess with the cutting machine. So um, this is just going to have to do. I am a little concerned because the reason I'm putting the numbers on them is so like if I just find this one, I know who it belongs to because obviously it has their number on it. But that is not going to solve the problem of finding pencils on the floor. And then what to do when a student runs out of pencils because they lost them in the middle of the week because that's a really annoying part like when you're in the middle of a lesson and a student's like, I don't have a pencil. It's like, what happened to the ones I gave you? <laughs> um, so I don't really know what to do about that yet. We'll see if that becomes an issue still. I'm really hoping this will solve the whole pencil dilemma because honestly, it's a big pain in the neck. I know it sounds kind of small and insignificant, but it's just one of those little things that just drives me crazy. So fingers crossed. This is the next thing I'm gonna tackle. This is where I store all of my Your Turn practice books and um, all of the materials for our Wonders curriculum. So as you can see, each of them has a little number in it and then inside of it is the Reading Writing Workshop. That is like one of the textbooks that we use for ELA. And so I'm going to unpack these little boxes that I just got that have all of our curriculum in it and then I'm going to put them in their cubbies. Um, I really like using this system. If you're looking for a way to kind of store all of their materials, this is by my door. And so when we do ELA, we're already coming in from either recess or our little um, switching time for focus groups. So it's a good time for them to be up anyways and getting their materials out of here. It's not like out of the way where we have to stop and then go get the materials. So it works for us. Um, I think this cubby bin is from Lakeshore. One of my coworkers gave it to me last year. Um, so I am going to unbox these now. got 25 of these bad boys which worries me a little bit I'm hoping one of them is the teacher copy because if I have 25 students then I don't have a cubby for one of them for like anything or a bin or anything so um I really hope that they're that that is just a teacher copy so we'll see fingers crossed these composition notebooks I got from Amazon they're just in all different colors and I think I'm gonna be using these for writing this year um, last year I just had paper in the back of their binders but it was kind of a pain they always just ran out and had to come get some from over here and it just felt like it interrupted the lesson or they would open their binders to get the paper out of the back and the tricky binder rings they couldn't quite figure out how to move everything over to the left side so that all their papers didn't fall out so then it was just like a constant fixing of the papers in their binder so i'm hoping this helps to solve that problem i'm just going to toss one of these in their bins <laughs> I know it looks like everything's just kind of thrown in there and I guess it kind of is because that's all I've been doing but it just helps me to take everything out of boxes and get all the stuff just put where I need it to go and then I can organize it later. So once I'm able to get into that hallway to get the binders then I will put together their little binders or their pouches and dividers and then I'll organize exactly how I want their bins to look. So I know it looks messy right now but this is just kind of how my brain works. I just have to get everything kind of out of piles and out of storage then I can organize. I just looked in this box that has some of the binders and I found the pouches that we are going to use for their binders. So I thought that I could just take these and then fill the binders that I already have and get those put away so at least I can get this big box out of my room because my personality type it just is bothering me. So um, I'm going to do that right now and then again next time I come back hopefully the floors will be waxed so I can get the rest of the binders. So I'm just going to get these out of the way for now. <laughs>
posters that say amazing work coming soon and they have the cute little cactus print on them um, which matches my classroom theme i can't exactly remember where i got these from i want to say they were free download on tpt but they could have also been in a cactus pack i bought so i'm not really sure i will find them and link them down below for you guys but what i'm going to do is i am going to clip these up onto my sharp work wall with the little clothespins because normally student work will be hanging here and so when parents come to back to school night it'll just be empty and it looks like a big open empty wall so i'm gonna clip these up so parents know that this is where i will be hanging student work <laughs> I don't put one on every single clip because I feel like it would look too crowded, but I do try to put them kind of every so often and I feel like it just helps it look less like a big blank wall and gets students excited that their amazing work is going to be up here. And then also pro tip is I have printed these out I think two or three years ago and then I just save them. So I save them in this little folder amazing work posters that way I don't have to reprint them in colored ink every year and I don't have to waste paper so this is just something that I save in my file cabinet and put up for the first week of school speaking of folders um, next to the amazing work poster folder in my filing cabinet I found my first week of school activities and I usually have everything kept digitally but I feel like when I come back from summer I have no idea what I'm doing and I feel like I don't know how to teach and I forgot what we do at the beginning of the year so this has been really helpful for me as you can see it is thick but it really helps to just pull that out and then be able to go through it so I haven't even opened this yet but um this is something that I put in a bowl at back to school night with a bunch of mints I love a good pun or a bad pun um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this home and go through this and kind of start planning out my first week back at school. Oh, I love myself. Looks like I saved my weekly planner from last year of what we did. Oh, last year, Jess, I love you. Oh, these are the task cards from Miss Fifth. Okay, so I'm going to take this home and go through it so I can share with you guys um, a whole video on back to school activities that I do in third grade. So. Stay tuned for that, but that is definitely something that I would recommend doing. Even if you are a digital person, for me, just having something to physically touch and be like, oh yeah, I remember doing this, and then easily be able to just go make copies of it or do whatever I need with it, put it up in my classroom, whatever, that has been a real big time saver for me. So stay tuned for the video on back to school activities because this puppy is coming home with me and you will see that in the next couple weeks. One reason why I like to come back to my classroom so early, well, it's not so early, it's two weeks ahead of time um, is because I like to kind of look around and see what kind of things I need to shop for or replace or whatever and so one of the things I'm going to be doing differently this year is on the we are family board where I have all of my class pictures and we have pictures of different activities that we do and when families come in to read and all that good kind of stuff um, as you can see it's like super crinkly and there's a lot of holes in it if you go up close because I just stapled all the pictures last year but this year, instead of doing that, I am going to get some more twine, like is on the sharp work wall, and some more of these little clips. And I'm going to um, string them along the We Are Family board, just like on the sharp work wall, so that it kind of looks a little bit more neat and organized. Um, I'm not sure. I kind of want to replace the paper on the back of it because it's driving me crazy because it's so crinkly. But I'm going to have to take down all of my walls next year and redo them, so I might as well just wait. So... My OCD is going to have to just let that one go, I think. But um, that is something I'm going to add to my shopping list um, is twine and then those little clips. All right, guys, I'm going to end this vlog here because I am now sitting at my computer and I'm starting to put together all of the little informational papers that I'm going to be putting in my little back to school folder that I always give to parents on back to school night. And it has all the information about our classroom, flexible seating, the house system, behavior management, um, every single thing that we do in our classroom. So um, I, instead of showing you guys me working on that, because I think that'd be kind of boring, I'm gonna wait until the next vlog that I upload to show you guys exactly what is in this. So 
right now I want to just make sure that I get all of this done and then I can show you guys what's inside of it. So thank you for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed. I will see you guys soon for another video and have a good day. Bye.